Hello, I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at Heir to the Dragon by Robert N. Charette. It's another novel in the Battletech series that we've been taking a look at, uh, which I started reading when I was in 10th grade. It's the second novel written by Robert N. Charette that's in this novel. Uh, this copy of this book uh, is uh, was was originally published by the company that puts that made, that made the Battletech War Game, uh, FASA, and then it was republished after Rock uh, Books picked it up. I'll link you to this in the uh, com in the uh, uh, comments below in case you're interested in checking it out. Um, I'm going to be giving a seven out of ten to this. Uh, it's definitely a lot of fun stuff that's happening in it. Uh, Robert N. Charette's, the first novel in this by Robert N. Charette, Rules on the Border, I've already reviewed for you. I'll link it to you in the uh, comments below as well. Uh, this novel uh, is uh, introduces the D D Draconis Combine, one of the five successor states, um, as a uh, more than just an antagonist. Um, uh, and, and after these two novels, they'll become more of a fan favorite. Um, a lot of the characters introduced in Wolf of the Border are in this one, uh, but I wouldn't call it a sequel. Um, I would just say it's set in the same world, but it's both. Uh, it takes place both before uh, the events of Wolves on the Border and during and after, um, and it follows the 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 scion, the prince of the of the imperial uh, ruler of the Draconis Combine, Theodore Carita, uh, and the Draconis Combine is introduced in the first two novels, which we've already reviewed for you by William H. Keefe Jr. The Intrusive the Great Death Legion, both have as a primary antagonist to the Dragonus Combine. Uh, specifically in the first novel, um, a duke named Hassad Regal, uh, and then the second novel, um, it's set in the Dragonus Combine, uh, as a, as, and they take a, a guerrilla combat a contract um, uh, as these mercenaries uh, in the uh, 31st century. Um, and so you get a lot of feel for what a Dragonus Combine world is actually like. Uh, and so they're, they're the primary antagonists then uh, in the actual proper campaign itself in the first two novels. Um, in the third novel, in the Great Death Trilogy, uh, William H. Keefe Jr. reintroduces uh, the Duke of Cedric from the first two novels, um, and he's now a, uh, an ally, a reluctant ally for our protagonists of the Great Death Legion um, after they're betrayed by their employers, uh, the Free Worlds League another one of the successor states um and so they'll end up they'll end up which i've already viewed for you um and he actually will say in there that 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 the trans combat never acted inappropriately towards them or the people while they're attacking their worlds uh and so he will say in there that while they were the antagonists they weren't exactly like right um so anyway uh so robert and introduces the, a deeper sort of appreciation in wolves of the border which is one of the most beloved novels of, of a series of more than 100 novels and it uh, by fans, uh, and I gave a seven plus to this one. It's 410 pages long, um, and I knocked this one out in four days. I did 100 pages a day and 110 pages the last day. This one is 40 pages shorter to Air to the Dragon that, that I'm reviewing for you now. Um, it's 370 pages long, so it's 40 pages shorter. Um, and it starts on page 10, so there's really only 360 pages you need to read. It was my initial intent to just do 10 pages fewer, uh, 90 pages for four, four days uh, over the course of it. I sat down on, on a Thursday uh, to, to, to knock out 90 pages, and I read it. Um, and I was 90 pages in, uh, and then I was like, hmm, I, I think I can do another 30 pages, definitely. Uh, and so I knocked out another 30 then, um, in, in order to reduce my read time to three days of 120 pages each instead of one, instead of, and then I woke up, normally I'll wake up at 8.45 in the morning on weekdays because I get to work at, at 9, I think it's me enough time to get ready, so normally I wake up at 8.45, uh, but I got up at 6.45 instead because uh, I was really, in, uh, really wanted to continue to, and I got, and I just read two straight hours of this novel before I went to work. Uh, so, I, so that was pretty cool, um, and so I knocked out another bunch of it and then i finished 120 pages on, on that friday um and then saturday I, I did a couple of episodes of the show that i'm streaming and then i uh, uh i was getting ready for a movie that i was going and seeing in my local uh, movie theater in downtown arbutus uh, and so i was had some time between the two so i knocked out 50 pages i was intending to knock out 30 and just do four 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 things of 30 pages a piece i did 40 and said okay 
let's just do one let's just do three three forties today and then i figured out i got enough time to do another one <laughs> so, so i knocked out another couple of chapters uh so i did 50 pages uh instead in one reading um and then again i was going to divide my my last two readings into two sections of, of 35 minutes after i got back from my movie and, and i just did it all one set because <laughs> uh, it was really definitely a gripping novel and so what I wanted to do is to show you what, when I say that this is definitely, uh, and, and most of the series have been very gripping too, uh, this is stuff that definitely holds your attention. Uh, it's never boring. Now, Robert Unsharet, again, he's beloved. He introduces a, the fan fa a fan favorite faction with the Draconis Combine after he starts to really take a deep, deep dive into these two series with your, with your protagonists, your antagonists, your friends, uh, the people that are har harming you all are, you know, from the Draconis Combine, right? Uh, and so uh, there's a lot of fun stuff that's happening in there. So we're taking a look at Theodore Carita. And this is basically the epic of his life. Now, one of my main issues, and why I'm only giving this a 7 out of 10 instead of a 7 plus out of 10, like, like I gave off on the border, is that it really skips ahead. It's, it's, it's decades of Theodore Carita's life uh, from... from, from uh, from when his dad takes over the, the imperial throne in the prologue uh, to when him and his dad come to an amnesty at the end, uh, decades and decades later. Um, so it really goes through all the major aspects of his life, from the Four Succession War, which the previous Warrior Trilogy told, uh, to the um, uh, to the to the Ronin Wars uh, that that he kind of sets up, and then in the mid 30s, uh, 3030s rather, uh, and then um, the War of 3039. And it ends at for the conclusion of the war, 39. Uh, so it's definitely this sweeping epic, if you will. Uh, but there's not a whole lot of battle and combat. Uh, and there's not a whole lot of those sorts of things. It's really just sort of a strategy and political thriller, if you will, set in the future, uh, rather than in, in the 31st century, rather than a traditional sort of, uh, you know, military science fiction, like the first books by William H. Keefe Jr. were. Um, it's also similar in Star Wars, Michael A. Stackpole. We've already reviewed his first trilogy that we did for you, uh, Warriors, the Warrior Trilogy. Uh, and um, again, I gave 7 out of 10s to him too because they were less um, impactful. Now, I've read all the Battletech novels once when they were published. I started reading them when I was in 10th grade, um, and I picked up a few novels, the first three um, in the Rock series. Uh, and so we'll be looking at those hopefully soon here in a little bit. And then I went back and read all the other ones that had already been published later on um, and grabbed uh, and did a deep dive into them. And then I just kept, kept reading them as, as they were published uh, at my local Walden Books in Southern West Virginia uh, and then enjoying that sort of a thing that was happening, right? Um, so I, I read them as they were getting published in high school and in, and in college. Um, and so I've read them just once each. I've never really gone back into it. And I really think there's a lot of fun in when, when you're, you know, somebody who's 45 like I have and have read so many different things in my life, right? To go back and reread some things uh, that I had, uh, you know, uh, different thoughts of. And now it's like, now what do I think, right? As somebody who has a lot more reading under my belt, a lot more understanding of things under my belt, right? And so forth. So I think there's value sort of in me going back. And that's what I've been doing for this channel. Um, as a reminder, in this channel, I review science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Uh, and, uh, you know, I read a lot of science fiction and fantasy when I was growing up, a lot of horror in college. Um, and so, I, and so now today I read more, probably more horror than science fiction and fantasy, but I still read all three of those genres pretty heavily. So those three genres are, are the three that I review for this channel. Uh, so, uh, you know, I've gone back and read some of the, you know, the, the Fred Saberhagen complete book of swords trilogy that I read when I was in sixth grade. Haven't gone back to that and read it since I read some stuff by, uh, Lawrence Watt Evans in his Eth Schnarr. Of the, uh, of the Spices uh, series of worlds, um, uh, like the Misenchanted Sword, he won a Hugo Award uh, for for a short story set in West Virginia, my home state, and uh, so that I, I've already viewed that for you. Um, but he also definitely did a lot of fantasy stuff that influenced me, and I read a lot of, but I haven't gone back to him and read them since. Uh, so I went to hit that with a fresh eye, right? Uh, so going back and rereading a lot of these things that I haven't, I haven't gone back to and read since grade school or junior high or high school or college or grad school and college. Um, and the Battle Sticks, I've only read once. So just now going back to it, I think there's a lot more fun stuff. Uh, Wolves on the Border by Robert N. Charette was probably something I probably didn't really fully appreciate until now. Uh, but knocked out in four days, 410 pages, you know. Right now, a couple of, that's a couple hours a day, 
right? Uh, so I knocked out the you know the sort of sequel, <laughs> the sort of prequel, and the sort of side goal. <laughs> it's set in the same place with some of the same characters, Eric to the Dragon, uh, and uh, uh, in three days instead of four, like I was originally intending to. So that's pretty gripping stuff. Um, but again, it, it skips around a lot. It may have you know it may start off a battle and then not finish it, right? It may talk about the strategies of a battle, but then not actually have any battles in it and so forth. It's it's very fast, uh, and so I think it could have done uh, a deeper dive into some of its battles, into some of its combats. Uh, I appreciate that it only has forty pages shorter. I appreciate that Robert Insurance didn't have a successful novel with the holes in the border and then say, okay, now I've had a successful novel, right? Uh, and so now what I'm doing is. Uh, I'm giving you a sequel, you know, with the, in the, set the same world with some of the same characters, uh, and uh, in, in the same section of the the inner sphere, and then I am adding in a uh, hundred pages, right? And now, now the next sequel is 510 pages with sequel itis, uh, which which is a, a term that I use for when the sequel is way too long, uh, something that it needs much much longer than it needs to be. Uh, like the Foundation trilogy, you have. I think Asimov think it's longer as the, as it goes along, or J.K. Rowling's the Harry Potter series, right, which starts out you can read it pretty quickly, but then the last book's like an epic that might take you weeks to read. Um, right, and those sorts of things that regularly happen as you get hits, right. I know, I guarantee you that I'm going to continue to have sales, right. And this is one of the most beloved novels in you know in the entire genre of a uh, battle tech novels, right, in the entire series, right. Um, it was definitely warmly received by fans, and it was hotly demanded as a republish, right? So it's definitely a, a key thing, right? Anyway, uh, these novels are published in the late 80s, um, and then they're republished in the early to mid-90s um, in the Rock series, which is how I own them. And that's what I want to link you to, because I think they're a lot cheaper. A lot of the early books that were printed uh, in Fast, except for one, uh, were reprinted as Rock books later on. The second book overall um, that was written uh, has not been republished yet, and it's like $150 on Amazon, so I haven't read it. Because that's because that's way too pricey for me, um, but anyway, I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and leave you to it. The BattleTech universe, in case you've never come across it before, heard or maybe you've heard about it, but you've never actually taken a deeper dive into it. It's set in the thirty first century. Um, it is a military. It is a. It was initially published as a board game and a war game, uh, and so it has that sort of a, a, a key genre to it. It's actually one of my favorite war games I've ever played. And my favorite game, actually, I've ever played, period. There's also a role-playing game set in that world called Mech Warrior, which is where a lot of the, the original um, uh, video game got, got their titles from. The third, And a lot of them are key, uh, best-selling uh, sort, of, sort of things uh, that you could get in, in, the, in the computer game system, too. There's also a card collectible game made by the Mega Heavyweight Wizards of the Coast, uh, which is a big name out there. Um, there is also a, uh, a, a Saturday morning cartoon. There's a there's a miniature line. Uh, Robert and Charette is a bigger name uh, in the genre, not not just because he's well succeeded, but but he also did a ton of novels. He also is a game designer and has designed some games. And if I remember correctly, he's in the Game Designer Hall of Fame. Uh, so he's actually somebody who's had a lot of different uh, influences and a lot of different things. He's also read some uh, read. He's also written uh, some some stuff in the uh, Shadowrun universe too, which is also a fast like, controlled. Genre. That's their other big name uh, thing in addition to Battletech. I haven't read any of those books or played those games, so I don't have any understanding of what that's like, uh, but that's also up there, too. I also wrote a trilogy uh, for them as well. Uh, so there you are. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. That is Heir to the Dragon by Robert N. Charette. Uh, so if you have, again, I keep these reviews spoiler free, so I only give you the basic sort of uh, plot line. That's what's happening. Uh, and then that's it. I, I sort of leave you to it. But if you want to talk about reviews, hey, let's do it in the spoilers, uh, in, in your comments below. Uh, just put it spoiler tags around in case people are wanting to read it. And that's it. Hey, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my video. We all have so many things happening in our lives and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling and I appreciate it. So thanks again. If you enjoyed this, why not hit that subscribe button? There's gonna be a lot more of these to follow. And, so, and then once again, have a good one.